All right, we are officially recording. So guess what? You guys come back here soon. All right, so here's how my class works. When you are in person with me, you're gonna have worksheets, okay? That are yours. I'm just gonna go around after we make sure that everyone has the correct answers. Um, you actually get to keep it. I'm not gonna collect it, but I'm gonna check it off, making sure that you did complete it and it is right. Um, so there will be online exams. Uh, you do get to use your notes. I have that open book policy with, if there's notes or PowerPoints or something like that, then you guys can absolutely use those for your, for your tests, okay? Um, I know Jordan, Ethan, Savelli, Evelyn, Kendall, a few others in this class and the others. How, how awesome is it to be able to use your notes when you have to take a test, guys? Is it helpful? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you're brand new to me and I am brand new to you, um, I have that policy. Uh, you can use your notes, no problem. Just because I understand from being a teacher that trying to cram all that information in your head and trying to remember it with everything else going on in our lives can be very difficult. So um, yeah, just don't lose your notes, okay? Um, you can have digital notes, you can have written notes, you can have your handouts that you can use. That's fine. I'm pretty easy going. Um, biggest thing, the way to get an A in my class is do your work, show up to class, check in with me. If you don't understand something, ask for help. Um, I know Evelyn has asked for help. Kendall's asked for help. A bunch of other students have asked for help and there's nothing wrong with asking for help. I ask for help all the time if I don't understand something. So uh, definitely please ask for help if you don't get it. Okay, I have office hours. I do after school tutoring. I'm pretty much at your disposal quite a bit of the time. Just, um, just ask. Can everyone do that for me? If you don't get it, what do you do? You ask the question. Good, yes? Yeah. Some people in the chat are saying yes. Okay, cool, fantastic. So <clears throat> since Mr. Lane's science class is pretty much finished the curriculum for seventh grade and my class has finished the curriculum for seventh grade, we are diving into touching and getting into some of the eighth grade stuff. Now, I'm not going to teach it full bore like this is all the eighth grade. We're going to go crazy on this and you're just going to learn everything in seventh grade. That's an unrealistic expectation. I'm not going to do that. What I am going to do and what Mr. Uh, Schwartz is going to do next door to me, him and I have teamed up. We've come up with a way to enrich and reinforce your sixth grade biology that you guys should have learned. Okay your fifth grade biology and physical science that you should learn. We're gonna review that stuff and we're gonna start teaching you some of the eighth grade curriculum. So when you do get to eighth grade next year, you are so set, you're like, I already know some of this stuff. This is so much easier for me to be able to comprehend and, and go forward and you know, really focus on getting like a B or an A, you know, the best grade that you possibly can, okay? Now, as I said, ask questions. If you don't understand something or if I go too fast, I will honestly say I do go too fast sometimes, okay? And I know that a few of you guys that have had me before have told me, slow down, Mr. Weber, you're going too fast. And that's okay. You can tell me to slow down. I don't mind. This is all enrichment. So as much as we get through, great. If we don't get through it all that I have planned, that's okay too. I don't mind. Okay. I want to go at the pace that's comfortable for my students and for you guys to actually learn it and retain it, meaning remember it. So let me show you your Google Classroom. Let me make sure that I'm in the correct one. Period two. Well, period one, two, three, and four are pretty much identical. Um, we might end up different pacing a little bit, but for the most part, it's the same. Okay, so bear with me, I'm on one screen versus three. So can everyone see the screen? Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, some people are using the chat. Thank you, Jordan. All right. 
All right, so obviously this is pretty much the same thing. Um, welcome to our hybrid model for learning here at Pomolita Science Department. It's a pleasure to finally have you guys back here at school for fourth quarter. We'll be learning about genetics, heredity, physics, engineering, and my absolute personal favorite, and I'm probably a little OCD when it comes to astronomy, but you'll be learning about astronomy too, okay? And it's sad, there's been a lot of stuff taken out of eighth grade curriculum that I wanna touch on this year, the fourth quarter, that you won't get next year, especially in astronomy. Because when you go to college and you have to take an introduction to astronomy class, because it is mandatory, um, you already have your basics down and then you just kind of, you're like, I already know some of this, cool. And then you can really focus on learning as much as you can. So uh, when you here on campus, six feet apart, wash your hands frequently. Um, I'm going to do my best to make sure every student has a little bag of tissues. So you guys have your own stuff. You're not getting up, walking around. Um, make sure that you wear your masks. We'll, we'll, we'll cover this uh, when you guys are in person just for safety procedures, okay? Uh, let's see here. Oh, there's a chat, hold on. Uh, Ty, I did hear, I will project this. Go ahead and get into Google Classroom and type in that code and let me know when you have it done, okay? You can do it fairly quickly because I know we have to get moving on the curriculum. Do you have it, Ty? I'll also type it in the chat for anyone that needs it. I did send out an email invite. I got it. You got it? Last night because I noticed that I didn't have any students. So I wasn't sure what happened. Um, some of you have multiple emails. So I just kind of chose the one that had the, the little picture on it, if you had it. Um, if I didn't get the right one, I apologize. Um, but we'll we'll figure it out, okay? All right, so obviously Zoom link is here for today. For my class, I am not gonna be Zooming and teaching in person. I've done that at the college level, both at Mendocino College and Santa Rosa Junior College. And with there are so many technical difficulties for students and me that we didn't get through a lot of the curriculum in the class time that we did, uh, we, we had. And we had like three to four hours each class. So I'm gonna try it this way. If it doesn't work, then I'll change, change how I do it. But <clears throat> every morning in all periods, I will be posting the video of me lecturing and telling you what to write, how to write it, and what assignment is gonna be done that day or for if it might be a, for a few days. I will be posting that in the morning, every single day, Monday through Friday, okay? Wednesdays are complete asynchronous days for all teachers, um, with the exception of a, a few teachers that want to teach on those days, please check with your teachers to see if they're teaching. I am not, I am taking role first period, and then I'm making sure everything is streamlined. You guys are getting what you need. If you need to meet with me, you can, I'll be available. Um, just arrange it, okay? I'm really big about tutoring and making sure you guys have what you need, okay? If you get stuck on something, shoot me an email. Uh, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be planning, grading, that type of stuff, okay? All right, so in the Google Classroom, there's a Zoom. Here we have our first assignment. This is gonna be basically tonight's and maybe tomorrow's depending on how far we get. So I'm gonna click it and I'm gonna show the instructions. Okay, so the review reinforced PDF, that's this piece of paper that I have in front of me. Okay, this is the actual worksheet that when we are fully in person as of Thursday, everyone is gonna get this. And I'll tell you which ones you have to do on the sheet, which one you can do via Google Classroom. Excuse me. So I'm gonna open it up. This is what it looks like. See how there's numbers to each question? There's 14. Now, 
This is the answer. This is what you guys are gonna turn in tonight or tomorrow, okay? It says it's due tonight, but it depends on how far we get. And I'll change it to tomorrow if need be. So there's 14 empty spots. So what you would do is you would, after we do our lecture and you review the PowerPoint, because there's 57 slides for today, most of them are pictures, so relax. <clears throat> you would type in your answer next to the number that corresponds to this, okay? I literally tell you what slides and what to write for most of these today, just to kind of get you going. Once we get on our feet and we get used to the hybrid model, um, I'm taking those training wheels off. And I will tell you during lecture, both via Zoom that I record and in person on where you can find the answers, okay? There's never any hiding stuff from you guys. It is very black and white. Of, this is what I want. This is what I expect. And this is what I'm hoping you guys should actually produce for me. And I will help you along to get to that, that goal. Okay, there's two chats. Let me see what that is. <clears throat> okay, there's just Jordan. All right, thank you, Jordan. All right, let's go back. Let me move this. I'll close this. All right. Now, if we go back to the main, now it says new raw material. New new material, excuse me. Oh, excuse me raw material. This PDF is over 200 slides long. Most of it's pictures because, well, pictures um, speak a thousand words. You get to see things up in a microscope, microscopic level. Um, I got this PD, this uh, PowerPoint from Miss Bird a long time ago, and I still use it because it's that awesome. So you guys can download it and put it in your Google Drive and open it in slides and then kind of go through it. It is significantly long. It's huge. So it takes a while for you for it to load. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? So be patient. It is slow on a Chromebook. So let's get started. We ended on 26 last class and then I assigned the rest for you guys to look through. All right. Hi, Lionel. I said, hi, did you get a chance to call the office and try to figure out why you're in two pods? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you and I can discuss it later on if you're gonna be shifting over to um, Mr. Schwartz or if you're gonna be changing a whole bunch of teachers. We'll figure it out, okay? Okay. But irregardless, um, Mr. Schwartz and I are completely teamed up and we're gonna be doing literally the exact same thing. Maybe just teaching style is gonna be a little bit different. Um, but the work is good, the same. So get a piece of paper and pencil or pen or open a Google Doc. And this goes for everyone, please. Please get ready to rock and roll because we are starting right now. Why did that What's going on? My desktop computer in my classroom is freaking out. That's kind of weird, huh? All right, so Leonel is here. All right, there we go. Are you guys ready to start? Let me know in the chat or via your microphone. Jordan says yes. Yes. Eileen says yes. Kay, Bella's ready. Bella's always ready. Yeah. I missed you. You moved Mr. Lane. I was so upset. Jonathan's ready. Okay, Isaiah, Ethan. Awesome, you guys are rock stars. So here we go. So we're gonna cover photosynthesis, autotroph, heterotroph, pigment, chlorophyll, and stoma. Um, your homework is not reading in the textbook. However, it would be finishing the slides up to slide 57. So I will post that in the chat towards the end of the period, which our period ends at 10.07. So 
we got half an hour, ladies and gentlemen. This video no longer works. I need to edit that slide. Okay, so you don't need to write this down, but we need to kind of understand how this process happens, kind of revisit second quarter curriculum for seventh grade and fifth grade and sixth grade also. So we know that the sun is the main source of energy for most living things here on earth, right? All cells need energy in order to carry out their function. And for, you know, both plants, animals, um, decomposers, uh, bacteria, they all need energy in order to, to, to live and function and carry out what they're supposed to. But where does the sun energy go? Who can tell me? Who can tell me whether it's in the chat or Eileen says it goes to plants. Yes, you are absolutely correct. It does go to plants. Does who remembers the process of which that is called? Photosynthesis. Yes. Was that Savelli? Yeah, I forgot yeah. how to speak in the middle of saying it. <laughs> Awesome, thanks Savelli, that's great. Yes, it is photosynthesis. Right on, you guys are so awesome. Okay, now, you don't need to write this down. We're, you're gonna see this slide a lot of times, especially when we hit astronomy. This is the electromagnetic spectrum, okay? It, now this slide is kind of backwards. Normally it goes radio waves is on the left-hand side and gamma rays are on the right. This one's backwards for some reason, I don't know why. Um, However, if you were to use like an old film camera, okay, and this is the, a great analogy, and you were to stretch it from the bottom of California all the way up to the very north section of Alaska, and do you know how big the visible light spectrum actually is if you were to have like 5,000 miles of regular camera film? My computer's freaking out. Um, how, how many frames do you guys think it would be? What do you guys think? Now, a frame is an inch by an inch, okay? For an old film camera. No guesses? Kendall says, over a million at least millions. Okay, so guess what? This, this kills me, this absolutely kills me. I learned this in an astronomy lecture, okay? The visible light spectrum is one frame. Right? You're just like, what? How? Well, visible light is actually a very finite, very small amount that is the, what is the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, because radio waves have a huge, they have an enormous range. And then you have microwave radiation, which is what we use for cell phones. We use microwaves, okay. Um, infrared, UV, X-ray, we all know what X-rays are. And then gamma rays, which it's still a huge area. However, they, it's not like radio waves. Radio waves takes up like twice as much space. Okay, and we'll get into the levels and frequencies of, of those and the, the length of the wavelengths. We'll get into that once we hit astronomy. But yeah, plants only absorb that much of the actual electromagnetic spectrum. It's crazy. I couldn't believe it. I was floored. I literally fell out of my chair because I was like, no, that, that can't be true. What? And I have a degree in astrophysics and I was like what there's no way yeah I, I was floored absolutely couldn't believe it so that's pretty neat all right here's our first note guys the process by which cells capture the energy in sunlight and use it to make food is called photosynthesis now I will give you a huge 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 hint on the sheet that you have to look at and then write your answers on that Google Doc that's on your assignment. 
This is number nine. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, it's number nine. You have to write in the vocabulary word. So write this down in a Google Doc, on a piece of paper, a notebook, something that you can keep so you can use it for your homeworks and your tests. Jordan, what do you mean your phone has a hundred zoom, but then it goes blurry? Uh, no, I have like the uh, new Galaxy, so like it. Uh, whenever uh, I zoom in like a hundred times, anything after ten, it just goes blurry. Oh, well, that's weird. <clears throat> I think it's because it's meant for far range. Mm, maybe. Maybe you'll have to you have to play with the optics on it. We can talk about optics when we actually get into astronomy, because we talk about the different types of telescopes and how they work. Okay, let me know in the chat or you can use your mic and say, Mr. Weber, I've got it down. And even if you guys wanna open up another window for you're actually doing your homework and you find number nine and you just type in photosynthesis, you guys can actually do your homework while we're doing this. This is what's really cool about my class. I let you do that. As so long as you can multitask and stay on, on task, we are good to go. And I can teach you how to do that. For the thing that we're supposed to answer, is it on the review and? Uh... Yeah, it's the Google Doc, Savelli. Okay. The PDF is the actual worksheet that you can look at and go, oh, that's what I need to look for, for when we're not in class, for you to be able to find it within the PDF and the, the, the PowerPoint. And this is going to take you guys a little while. I know you're used to HMH and working in that giant book where there are three books. Um, I'll teach you how to, how to do this properly so you don't get behind. So you guys, don't worry. I'm going to help you out. I'm not going to leave you out in the cold. I, I promise. Even though it is kind of cold. All right. Are we good? Can we move on, ladies and gentlemen? Here, there's a chat. Kendall says, yes. Jordan, Bella. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, Bella. I appreciate that. So that looks good. Right on. Marcos is good. Okay. So, guys, this is posted in Google Classroom. So you can always go back. Okay? I, I don't take down any of my materials just because I want you guys to be able to have it and be able to learn it. Okay. You don't need to write this down. Nearly all living things obtain energy either directly or indirectly from the sun, uh, um, directly from the sunlight captured by photosynthesis. What do they mean by indirectly? I want you guys to think back earlier this year when we talk about how an ecosystem flow of energy works. Sunlight producers, okay. And then what happens to the next level of energy? Does something eat the producers? So think about grass. Does something eat grass? Okay. Okay, let's, so let's just say um, a grasshopper. Okay, this, this, I'm, I'm thinking here. So a grasshopper eats grass. Does something eat the grasshopper? Almost anything that hunts does. Correct. So remember, there's that 10% rule that we talked about in ecology this year, that only 10% of energy actually gets passed on to the next level. The rest of it is used in, the, in biological processes. So, right, good. So you guys are understanding that <clears throat> I'm seeing this in the chat through private, that you guys are able to um, know that sunlight causes producers to produce glucose and energy, okay? And then other organisms eat the producers and then other, other organisms eat those organisms and then so on and so forth until everything 
is back into the non-living environment. Jordan's back. Okay, so let's keep going. Hydrothermal vent, if I play these, it's gonna freeze my computer. Um, I will try to find a different way. It's because I am doing Zoom right now. Dory, gotta love it. Okay, so plants and grasses use energy from the sun to make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. We know this. So guess what? Here are our two next key terms that we're gonna cover. An organism that makes its own food is an autotroph. Please write that down. And the next one, an organism that cannot make its own food is called a heterotroph. So write both of those down. The third one is optional. You technically don't need it. But many heterotrophs obtain food by eating other organisms. Well, they don't make their own food. So what do they have to do, guys? They have to eat other organisms. Guess what? You are a hetero heterotroph. I am a heterotroph. Anything that is not a plant is a heterotroph. Kind of crazy, huh? So let me know in the chat or via mic that you have those two written down. And I'm gonna give you a really big hint. <clears throat> Number 13 and 14 of the review and reinforce, either the answer sheet or the PDF version. This is the answers. Shh, don't tell anyone. Sure, Eileen. A heterotroph is an organism that cannot make its own food. It has to eat another organism in order to survive. Okay, that's number 14. And then an organism that makes its own food is called an autotroph. So an organism that uses sunlight to and like carbon dioxide and water in order to make glucose and breathable oxygen. That is an autotroph. So they make their own food. They're not dependent on anything else. You're very welcome. So let me know when you guys are good and we'll go to the next slide. I need coffee today. Oh, it's cold. At least I'm in, I'm, I have my microwave here. I keep getting these spam phone calls. <clears throat> The worst part about them is uh, if you answer and try to uh, play a game of uh, make them hang up first is it's a robot. Always. Yeah, I know. I don't know how many times I blocked the um, dealership renew your warranty auto phone call and they just keep changing the number. It's driving me crazy. Oh, excuse me. Uh, hiccups. Oh, okay, so Savelli's finished. Any, anyone else finished? Can we move on, ladies and gentlemen? Kendall's done. All right. Anyone else? Bella's finished, Eileen's finished, all right. Remember, if I'm going too fast, don't be afraid, you can tell me and I will do my best to slow down. This is also posted on Google Classroom, so at any point in time after class, when you're done with your classes, you can always go back and reference back to it, okay? And if it's too big and it doesn't load, email me, and then what I'll do is I'll break them apart in sections. If that is a little bit easier, I can do that anyway. <clears throat> All right, so next one, sources of energy. We already talked about how energy flows, okay? Another example of how energy flows through an ecosystem. 
Now, here's a huge hint for everyone that's gonna be learning through like lecture, PowerPoint, interactive stuff. Um, with my PowerPoints, if it's bolded like this, do you think it's important and should write it down? What do you guys think? Probably, but um, one thing for me, your screen is like um, frozen on the PowerPoint page. Yeah, it's not showing the slides. Thank you okay. guys for telling me. Yeah, I was thinking you were looking at something else other than, yeah, there we go now, yeah. There we go, okay, sorry guys. Zoom is, Zoom has been weird. It did the same thing um, first period and I'm literally right next to my updated Wi-Fi router in my room. I, I apologize, okay. So this is slide 17. This is number one, two, three, four, five, and six of the um, questions, okay? So photosynthesis technically is a very complex process, but we're gonna break it down so you guys can really understand it. During photosynthesis, plants and some other organisms, algae, some bacteria, okay, use energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide and water. So carbon dioxide and water are known as the um, starting points or raw materials. So that would be number five. They are also, and I'm gonna put it in the chat for you guys. I, you're supposed to write the chemical formula for one and two, okay? So carbon dioxide is CO2, okay? And then number two, what is water chemically? Who remembers? Kendall says H2O. Yeah, you guys got it. Good job. Okay. And then we know sunlight converts those two in a complex chemical process into what? Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Mr. Lane made a boo-boo. It's <laughs> funny. Okay. Um, <laughs> glucose or sugar. Okay. Which, oops, that's number three. All right. And then number four, what is breathable oxygen? Who remembers? It's called dioxide. Remember, right? Okay. What does di mean? means, how many fingers am I holding up? Two. Two, okay, so two oxygen atoms covalently bonded, meaning they're sharing electrons, so they're happy, okay? So they're sharing electrons and they're bonded together. That's breathable oxygen, that's what we breathe. So number four is O2, all right? Now, six, what are the products of photosynthesis? Well. It's the same thing as three and four. So sugar or glucose. And then what else? Oxygen. Okay. So this is how, when I'm in person, this is how we're gonna be doing this quite a bit. All right. How are you guys doing so far? Would be good? Yeah. All right. Do you guys have the bullet point written down? Let me know when we're good. So Jordan's yes, Savelli's yes. Thank you guys for utilizing the chat. Kendall's yes, Bella's like, I'm done. Woo. Thank you, Bella. I'm glad to have you back. 
Glad I have all of you guys. Can't wait to learn some new students. Yeah, I was about to say, what about me? Isaiah, I'm thrilled that I have you in science. I, I knew you, you missed me. Loved you in computer science. Now it's going to be in person soon. So it's going to be game on. It's going to be awesome. Okay. So I'm going to move on to the next set of slides. Did it change, guys? Does it now like the picture of the globe? I just want to make sure it's working. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm going to skip a few slides. A lot of it are pictures. I'll explain them briefly. Okay. You can go back and take a look. So this is a plant on a microscopic level. These holes that you're seeing here are called stomas. That's the opening where um, plants take in the CO2 and release the oxygen. So chloroplast, epidermis. This is actually a chloroplast. This is part of us inside of a cell um, for, for a plant. This is where actual photosynthesis takes place is in the chloroplast. Okay, so um, number eight is, is the answer. Where does photosynthesis take place? It's also slide 40 is where does it occur? It's in the chloroplast. So this is just the cell wall skin. All right, here we go. This is your next two notes. The green color comes from pigments. So the green color in plants come from what are called pigments. Now those pigments, are um, chemical compounds that absorb green light. Not just all light, but green light. That's why plants are green. It's because they're absorbing that, that type of light. Now, remember, light is from red all the way through violet, okay? So plants are absorbing the green spectrum of the visible light spectrum, okay? Very, very, very small little piece. Now, those pigments are called photosynthetic, meaning they take light energy and convert them. And that pigment is located in the chloroplasts of the cell. And it is called chlorophyll, which is this vocabulary word that's bolded right here, okay? That's what that is called. So the photosynthetic pigment that uses the light energy is called chlorophyll. Now, to help you answer this, this is number 11, okay? Chlorophyll is the number 11 answer. As I told you, I'm, I'm helping you out here. We're kind of moving. And as we get better at this, I'm gonna take the training wheels off and you guys are gonna be amazing rock stars at this. Let me know when you have these two notes down and then we're gonna keep moving on. <clears throat> Another spam phone call, oh my God. Hey, let me turn my phone on vibrate. There we go. Okay. All right. Chat. Good. Okay. Bella's finished. Cool. Thank you. Anyone else? Isaiah's finished. Right on. Belly's done. Now there's 25 of you in this class, and some of you are actually in third period, but I'm letting you kind of you should be taking notes. If you're in my third period class and you've finished with the other teacher early, take notes so you can ask questions, take more time asking questions. All right, so I'm gonna keep moving. So chlorophyll captures light energy and uses it to power the second stage of photosynthesis to produce the sugars. Okay, it's not just first stage is absorbing the light. Second stage is actually converting the carbon dioxide and the water into glucose, okay? So this is a three-dimensional model of what chlorophyll actually looks like on an atomic level. No, I'm never gonna ask you guys, 
to tell me what atoms are in chlorophyll. Um, when you get to high school though, that is actually part of what you learn, which is really cool. <clears throat> now the cell needs two raw materials. Hint, 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 okay? This is number one and number two. So you need H2O and CO2. Now plant roots absorb water from the soil and then water moves up into the leaves. It's through a um, vacuole system. So it, you know how we have like veins and arteries in our, in our body? Well, plants have very similar structures like that. So make sure on one and two, you have H2O and CO2. Three and four, you guys should have glucose and oxygen. Okay, so this is kind of just basic um, plant anatomy that you should have learned in fifth grade, okay? So water molecules are taken up into the roots and they travel upstream kind of through like the veins. And then the xylem cells, they move back and forth and then they allow for bonding to take place through the cell wall. So through diffusion, the water actually moves through the cell wall. It, it opens it up and it lets it through. Pretty neat. No, I'm not gonna quiz you on any of this. Not for that, okay? Uh, I'm gonna skip this because we will get to stoma in a second. Now, <clears throat> this is just a microscopic view of the transport, the xylem transport inside of an actual root. It shows how water moves up and down. Now, here's your next note. Carbon dioxide enters plants through super small openings on the underside of leaves, and those are called stomas, S-T-O-M-A-T-A, -A, stomata. And this is number 12. You guys got it? Oh, there's a chat. Okay, let's see here. Eileen says not yet. Okay, no big deal. Spelled it good. Okay. Eileen, do you have it down yet? Almost, okay. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna have you guys do. Since we are literally at the very end of the period, okay? Here is the rest of your assignment. It's coming in the chat to everyone, okay? going to everyone. What I want you to do, now you're gonna go, oh my God, that's, 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 that's so many slides to go through. Most of them are pictures, okay? I want you guys to finish reviewing section one in the PowerPoint, this is homework, up to slide 57. So you have about 15 more slides to just look at. A lot of them are pictures. I would wanna say probably 10 out of the 15 are, are nothing but pictures. You really take a look at them and really go, oh, that's kind of neat. And then do the assignment 4.1, review and reinforce the Google Doc that's on Classroom, okay? Just write in the answers that I've literally been telling you where they're at, okay? 
the PDF is just the like picture version of this. So look at that. That's where the question is. And then just go to the Google Doc to fill it out and then turn it in by this evening, please. If you get stuck, what do you do? Email me, okay? Email me. Really, really, really important. Um, I do have office hours. I will be on and I'll post it a Google Meet probably from like two until close to three today um, for like office hours. Um, after that, I have some appointments after school is finished completely. So, <clears throat> um, but yeah. So if you need help, I will be available after fifth period. Okay, guys, do you guys have any questions? Kendall's good. Eileen's good. Bella's good. All right. Well, you have a few minutes before we are completely finished. I'll let you go. And then make sure that you are on time to your third period class. And I'll see everyone tomorrow. Okay. We're zooming tomorrow. Yeah, that's how we do this. So you guys have a fantastic day. And I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, guys.